Hey and welcome back to another video and in our last video we actually cleaned up our view and made it more readable by separating out our views into components. Now in this video we're actually going to look at how we can use our static JSON mapper to actually load some fake data into our views until we actually add in our actual API calls. Now the reason why we're not using the API yet is because we just want something quick to use to help us finish off our UI and quickly prototype it. And once we have this in place, it will make our life a lot easier so we can just slot in our service code. So right now, you'll notice that our view is just loading a bunch of numbers. But what we actually want to do is use some kind of dummy data so it's a bit more realistic and matches our mock-up designs. So in our people view, let's actually add in our on appear function to actually get our users when the screen appears. So after your toolbar, we're just going to add in an on appear, like so. And then within this on appear code, we're just going to write out the logic to actually get our dummy data from our JSON file like we did in our previous video. So I'm just going to type out and we'll break it down. So in our on appear, we're using a do catch because we wrote a function here, decode, which would actually throw an error. So if something goes wrong, we want to catch and handle it. What we're doing is we're going to capture the value in the request. And we're also saying that we want to access the user static data file and we want to map our JSON file to this model here called users response. So now that we actually have this in our view, we need to give it some kind of local source of truth. Now the source of truth is basically the data storage that this view will read from. So we can actually do this by adding in a state variable and you can learn more about this in my Swift UI state and data flow playlist mini course on my channel, which I'll put a link to. Now let's actually add in a state property to the top of our file. So we just scroll up, here, we actually want to create a private state property for holding our users. So let's do that now. So now we have our state property and we've marked it private because we don't want it to get exposed from outside of this struct view. And we've given it an empty array for now. So this is what our view is going to observe in terms of what's shown on our for each. So now what we want to do is in our on appear, we actually want to get our users from our decode function and set it to our users so we can easily do that by just simply just saying here users is equal to and I will say res and if you look at the type data is an array of users so just to say res dot data like so so now that we're actually storing this within our source of truth for this file we now need to actually use this in our view so right now you'll notice that our for each it's just using a bunch of numbers. What we want to do is we actually want to replace it with our bunch of users. So let's just replace this with our users property, which is all good. Now, when you do this, you should actually get two errors. And the reason why is because our model isn't actually identifiable, meaning that there's no way for our for each to be unique. And to learn more about this, then check out my video, Identifiable and For Each in the Swift UI Sessions playlist. So we actually could make our user model in here actually identifiable if we wanted to. But we don't actually need to do that for this case because if you actually look at our model, you'll notice that we already have a property here called ID, which is an integer for each user. So this can actually be used to uniquely identify each user within our model. So let's use that instead. So what we need to do is we just need to update our key path here to just use rather than self, we want it to use the ID. So we're just going to say dot ID like so. So you now should see that that error goes away, which is cool. But now we actually have another error. And the reason why is because if you actually go into our person item view, you'll notice that we said that we should actually pass in a user with the type integer. But actually what we want to do is pass in a user with a type of user instead so we can actually access the properties and lay out our UI. So let's change this type here to user. So this error should now go away when you build a project, which is cool. And just to make this a bit more descriptive, we're just going to change item to user. And we're also going to update this to user as well. But now we'll have another error. <laughs> and the other error will be within our person item view. So if you scroll down to the bottom, we now have an error here because our person item view expects a user and not a number. So first of all, let's fix this one before we tackle this one here. 
So within here, what we actually want to do is create a preview user using our static JSON file and pass this within our person view. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we have here is a static computer property called preview user. So this is our preview user that we're actually going to use within our SwiftUI previews. And this is actually one of the benefits of having local static JSON files because you don't need to start writing like extra networking code in your SwiftUI previews. You can just simply grab the data from a file and just inject it into your view like so. So now we just pass in the static property within our static previews and we're able to now preview the first user within our static data. Now it's worth noting as well that before we actually had a try where we had a do catch. Now I'm actually forced on wrapping this because I know that this file has at least one user within it. So I kind of am assuming that this can never fail. And we just force on wrap this first one as well because we know that the data array of users is always going to have one user at the start so that's why we're okay to safely just force unwrap it in these two cases so now let's actually fix our other error at the top here and what we actually want to do here is we just want to replace this rather than being just user we now want to pass in user dot id like so cool now the next thing we want to do is actually use our actual first name and last name within our you know view here so rather than having this placeholder we're actually going to use the properties from our user so let's just replace this with our user dot first name and then we'll also replace this with our user dot last name awesome sweet so now if we just run this in our swift preview you'll now notice that you're actually getting them real IDs and also real names. And we just go back into our people view and let's run this on a SwiftUI preview. You'll now see that we actually have proper names here and proper IDs relating to our JSON file. So now our JSON file is being used to actually map and build out this UI. But if you actually look at our mockups, one thing you'll notice that we don't actually have this blue rectangle. We actually have some images that we actually get back from our API. So starting with iOS 15, you actually have a new component called async image. Now I've actually done videos on async image, building your own caching, building your own async image with caching options and building your own async image with caching options and saving to disk in the SwiftUI sessions playlist. But in our case, we're just going to use async image, but you're going to want to use the avatar property within the user model to basically load the image within our async image in this video. So let's actually add this in now. So let's go into our person item view. And then rather than us having this rectangle, we're just going to remove this for now. And I'm just going to do a bit of typing. So within here, what we're going to do is we're going to just type out async image. And then we want to use the option where you get the URL content and the placeholder. So for this URL, what we're going to do is just use the user's avatar property. So we're going to say event string, and then we're just going to say user and then avatar, because this is what actually holds the URL to a user's actual profile image. And then for the content view, we're going to now actually use the actual image view and actually apply some styles onto that. But first of all, in our placeholder, we just want to add in a progress view. So you can just show something when it's loading, which is good. And then within our content view, we're just going to say image. And then within here, we're now going to actually style our image. So we want to add in our image and we want to make it resizable so we can change the size of it. And we want to set the aspect ratio of the image to be fill. So this is so that the image fills up the entire container so we don't have any like white space on the left and right hand side. And then we want to give this a height of 130. And then finally, we want to also apply the clipped modifier onto it. So because we said that we wanted the aspect ratio of it to be fill, it's actually possible for this image to overflow. So to make sure that it doesn't overflow, we just clip it to make sure that it only lays out the image within this bounding box. So let's actually just preview this in our component here. And now you'll see that we actually have a person image like so. Let's actually go into our actual main application. 
to our people view and see what this actually looks like. So let's go into our people view. And then now you can see in our Swift UI preview, this actually looks more like our design in our mockups. And each person has their own image that's being loaded and it all looks pretty good. So sweet. Now, what we've actually done here in terms of how we fetch our data, if we wanted to in the future, we could easily just replace this with our networking code and that would be fine. But there's also a problem with that as well. So the problem that we actually have is that our actual code in terms of fetching our users is tightly tied directly to this view, meaning that if we wanted to actually test, you know, unit test the logic that we use to actually fetch users, we couldn't easily do this because it's directly tied within this view. So in the future videos, what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually move out this logic into its own view model. We're only doing it in this on a pair just for the purpose of quickly prototyping and just seeing something on the screen. Now in the next video, what we're actually going to be doing is building our people details view that you see here. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bells for updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you in a bit. Deuces.